Okay, so we're going to go through these exam questions. This is after chapter 11D. So this is when we have the recursive um, formulas for matrices with the added extra bits. So we can see here it says matrix SN plus 1 can be determined using SN. So all that means is we can use the state before to get the next term and this is the rule and you can see it has an extra bit and this time it's minus C. So they said you, we've been given SO, so they said use, given this information, S2 equals. So you remember we can't, when we have this extra bit here, we must do it recursively, which means step by step. So we're going to go S1, we're going to do the transition times SO minus C and we'll get an answer. So I'm going to do this on the calculator. So we've got, um, I've got it ready. So S, the transition times uh, SO and then we're doing minus the C, which was that. So if we put in there and we press enter, we get 180. 130. Now, if you look, the total here was 350. We're actually, because this is minus C, we are actually taking away 40. So does this total to 310? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So that's good. So then we actually want S2. So this is where we would do the transition times S1 minus C. And obviously, a quick way to do it on your calculator is just highlight the statement before and you change this one in here. So 180 and 130. Now we should drop another 40. So hopefully we get down to what, 270? And is that correct? Yeah. Yep. So we get 148, 122. So the answer was B. All right, let's move along. So a series of extra rehearsals commenced in April. So what happens often this question four, it's the last one in the exam. So you've had this scenario going on forever. So this was talking about they were doing a rock of Stedford or something. Anyway, they had um, dance rehearsals and singing rehearsals. So the matrix equation used to determine the number of students expected at these extra dancing and singing rehearsals um, were, is given by this. So here, what you can see, you've got this extra matrix. So extra matrix, don't use the power trick. So, and then they've given me L1. So they said L1 was the first week. So then it says calculate the number of those who are expected in week three, so that would be L3. So that means I wanna go two ahead, but I have to do it recursively because we've got that extra one. So first I'm gonna to have to find L2 because I've been given um, L1. And then I'm gonna minus this five and seven. So if it's a minus one, we're losing, how many are we losing every time? We're losing 12, aren't we? Because 5 plus 7 is 12. So let's go back. I've got that. Is this in? Yeah. So let's do this one. We've got the transition times um, L1, which was 95. Then I'm subtracting this extra matrix and I get 180 like that. And then obviously I can now find L3 because I'm going to put, so this is L2. I'm going to put L2 into the formula. So just so you know, because so it's in your notes, you're popping that one into there. And then we're going to do it. So if I pop that on the calculator, so I'm just going to quickly, it's easier to just highlight it. And then we're just going to change that one to the L2. So I should be losing another 12. So, yep, we're down to 168. So we've lost. So then the next question says, of the students who attend rehearsals in week three, so that's week three, 
How many are expected not to return to rehearsal in week four? What's that going to be? It's, it's going to be 12, isn't it? Sorry. Okay, so it said how many extra singing rehearsals in week three? I think, what was it? Who was top? Uh, singing was on the bottom. So singing is the bottom. So we'll say 68 are singing. Okay. Um, and then it says of the rehearsals in week three, um, who will not return next in week four. So that's just step by step. We know it's the five and the seven, which we know we've been watching. It'll be 12 not, um, not expected to return because we're losing them. You could have, some kids would have found S4 and seen the total difference, but we can see that it's 12. All right, so that is an exact, that one. Okay, then this one, question seven. Now, this one is probably not the clearest in some of your notes. Just write, so here we can determine this, the next state with this recurrence relation. Just make sure that's a minus C in there. Okay, now they've given me T, they've given me SO, and they've given me S1, and they want me, and they said C is a column matrix, so at least I know it's going to be like, it's obviously like a state matrix, okay? And yeah, it's gonna be a three by one. So this will be C, but we don't know what it is. So if we just, I'm just gonna go down here and um, just talk about it. The question is S2. So if we were doing it recursively, S2 would have been the transition times S1 and then you would have minus C. That's what you would have done. Now, if you look at what we've been given, we've got this and we've got this, but we don't know that. So we must find out what that is. So using what we've got, because I have S1, if I think about how S1 was found, S1 was found by going the transition, you did that first, you times it by that, then you minus C, okay? So if we were, we want to find out, obviously C is our question. We don't know what that is, but we know all these. So if you think about rearranging equations, you could work that out. So for example, if I moved, I want to know what just C is, not what negative C is. So if I move C over the equation, the equal sign, I could say S1 plus C, because it does the opposite, equals the transition times SO. Now, you can actually do that timesing part. This part you can do because we've, both, we've got both of those values. So first you could do that. So essentially um, S1, because I want to get C by itself, so what I'm now going to do, I'll move this S1 over an equal sign. Now it's like it's been adding on that side. So if I do the transition times SO, I do that first, put that in brackets, then I minus S1, we're going to see what C equals. And then once we've got that, we can pop it in. So let's go, we'll do it on the calculator. So we've got the transition. So what I want to do is C is the transition, which is this, times the um, SO, which was 2151, that one. Okay, so I want to pop it in brackets because I want it to do that first. And then I want to minus S1, which was the 24.0. So then I want to minus this one. I press enter and there's C. So C equals three, negative one, two. So C equals three, negative one and two. So now I can go and do this because I now have that. So let's go find that. So it would be um, the transition, I'm just gonna highlight it, times S1, which was the 24, and then I'm gonna minus the C, which is that one there. So I press enter and I get, what was it? 20, oops, 
58, I think it was, and 16.18. Okay, so it ends up being A. So a large population of martin birds migrate each year to a remote island and nest and breed. There are four nesting sites, A, B, C, and D, and researchers suggest that they follow um, this transition matrix. So here's that. So it says 2,000 and... Um, 2,800 martin birds uh, at nest at site C in 2008. Of these 2,008 martin birds, the number that nests in a site A in 2009. So really you want to go from C to A. So if you look up there, um, C to A is 20%. So because they say of these, so you want 20% of... 2,800, so that's just 0 0.2 times 2,800, so that's 560. So that's just pretty easy. Then it says question 8, the transition predicts that in the long term the mutton birds will, now it's only saying nest at, so because we don't really know how many, um, we don't know what the initial state matrix is, or we don't know in total how many birds. We only know how many birds are at site C at the moment. But because they just want to know what's happening, they don't actually want a number, I'm going to do the transition to a high power because it's, um, it's the long term. But then I'm just going to, you could just look at it, but we, I'm just going to chuck 100 because I'm chucking 100 to see um, what percentages they all land in. So if we have a look so i so if you just want to write that that i made made up so uh so sorry with a hundred percent because i just want to see where they go so if i go and do this so i've got the transition to a high power of 50 and then i'm timesing it by this percentages and i press enter you can see they're all at site 75% at site B and 25% um, at site D. So what happens in the long term? They all nest at site B. So if you did that, you could just say 0, 75, 0, 25. So that was A, B, C, and D. But as someone said, or they said, because you can see the ones, once you get to B, you never leave. And once you get to D, you never leave. That's what happens when you have a one in there. All right, the last one is the question that I really wanted to show you. Now, it says 6,000 um, bird, mutton birds site nest at um, site B in 2008. So we've got 6,000 at site B in 08. Assume equal numbers of martin birds nested at the four sites in 2007 and the same transition applies. Um, the total number of birds that nested on the island in 2007 was. So if you look, we obviously 2000, you go 2007 to 2008, that's one transition. So if we were finding um, this, State 2008 would be the transition times the state of 2007. And what they told us when you, um, they said when you did this and you had A, B, C and D, you only got told that there was 6,000 here. But they did tell you something else. They did tell you that um, there was all equal numbers all equal number of birds in 2007. So I don't know what that is, but I know that they were all the same. Okay, so what I'm saying is I would have done the transition and it would have been times this, what happened in 2007, but what we're saying is they were all the same amount, so I'm just calling that X, and when it equaled, it equaled um, the 2008, which I do know this number 
was 6,000. So what you can 